Okay. Yes, we are live. We are live. We are live. Good morning, Facebook. So what I wanted to talk about today was five effective tactics or tools to improve your trading mindset. So the thing with this, and before we get into those five, there are a couple of things that I want to highlight because there's a few things that after 18 years in this game and teaching other people that you see patterns in the way people behave. And I think one of the first and most important things to understand with, with trading is that it's a performance-based activity. Okay, so you've got to develop a skill and you've got to practice that skill. It's, there's a process to it and you've got to get better at it. But the things that will impact you are more than just simply the result of the markets moving up or down, moving in your favour or against your favour. So regardless of the result, you've got to think of trading as a process-based activity. So one of the ways to improve your mindset is to focus on the process and focus on getting better at that process. And part of that is what you do, the actions that you take, the decisions you make, the analysis process you use. And that's what I would say is the internal element of it. But there's also an external element. There are things that you can do outside of physically placing the trades and physically doing the analysis that are going to improve your mindset. Now, I want to start out with something that is really, really important in terms of mindset, because there's a lot of stuff written about trading mindset that sounds good in theory, but actually the reality is very different. And that key thing that I see written a lot is that you should aim to trade without any emotion. Now for me, the word without is the issue there. So I see a lot of traders get despondent because what happens is when they start out and they place trades, they are naturally going to feel fear, greed and all the different emotions depending on whether the trade wins, loses, whether it goes up, goes against them, goes with them. Now for me, Aiming in a six month period, a year period, nine month period, whatever it is, to suddenly be completely emotionless when they trade, I personally think that is a goal. They're setting themselves a goal that they aren't going to achieve. And if they're measuring themselves against that, they're going to feel like they're off track. So for me, rather than set the goal of a trying to achieve or trade with zero emotion, and therefore you've improved your mindset, what I teach my traders to do and what I focused on my own trading is to essentially to say, right, if my volume with my trading is at a five or my emotion is at a 10, is rate it, over time, am I able to trade with less emotion so I have less ups and downs, say, during the trade or prior to the trade, I am feeling more or less anxiety towards the trade because it's going to fluctuate. Because if you're placing a trade and you're trading off of a, and that trade is off of a four trade losing run, you're probably going to feel slightly more anxious about that trade than you would have done if you'd had one winner and then three, sorry, one loser and then three winners and you were coming into that next trade off the back of three winners. So there's going to be times where you're, you'll feel more emotion about a trade or less emotion about a trade. But overall, what you want to do is measure it over the long term to see whether or not the intensity of the emotion is dropping and the frequency of how you feel about that. So it begs the question, what five things do I think you can actually do to improve that? Well, I'm going to start with an external one. So some of these are kind of internal, things that you've been doing internally. Some of them are external. And I'm going to start with one that's, that's overlooked, which is in your environment. So what does your trading environment look like? Are you sat with a laptop on your knee, on your sofa, like I am now, trying to place trades and the kids are running around or you're being distracted? So I won't trade here. I'll be in my trading room, door shut, environment set, my desk is clear, I don't have my other laptop pinging at me. I see traders day trading and they've got their emails popping up as a distraction. So firstly, make sure you set your environment up in a way so there's none or minimal distraction and ideally get yourself more than one screen. We have a little saying at Trader Support Club which is if you're a swing trader and you've got less than three screens, it's going to cost you time. 
But if you're a day trader and you've got less than three screens, it's probably gonna cost you money. Now that isn't an excuse, guys out there, to buy 20 screens, but set your environment up in a way that allows you to maintain focus. Because one of the things that challenges traders is when they make mistakes because they've got the kids running around or they're distracted by email notifications, that affects their mindset. So if you can minimize the number of mistakes you make, that will likely have a positive impact on your mindset. But the caveat to that is don't overdo the whole environment. I've seen traders do the other thing, which is they spend their entire time creating a perfect environment, but they haven't actually practiced the process for their trades, and then that affects their mindset. So don't overdo environment, but don't underestimate how important it is to treat your environment as if you're a professional trader. I see a lot of people say, well, I'm only trading with a small account. Once I've got more money, then I'll take it more seriously. No, you should treat it now in exactly the same way as you would. I trade the same way now with multiple six-figure accounts as I did when I only had 800, the equivalent of 800 quid in my trading account. So very important environment. Number two, feedback process. So it's important that you have a feedback process and I suggest two ways to do this. You have um, an internal feedback process, so one you do yourself. So make sure you allocate time during the week or during the month to evaluate the trades that you have placed that week. You fill out your data sheet and you accumulate the data and analyze the data from your trades and then review what you've done. Have a journal as well. So have a journal of all the trades that you've placed and focus on emotions pre, during and post trade and evaluate where you're at with that. And the second way to have a feedback process is via a coach, somebody like myself or a trader that you respect that's able to critique what it is you've done and potentially find the issues. And this is where I bring the 80-20 rule into play. Very often I can look at 20% of what a trader's doing, the small elements, but that can have a massive impact on where they are. So make sure that you have two feedback processes, an internal one that you use with yourself at least once a week and potentially once a month. It's actually the end of the quarter right now, so I do exactly the same thing at the end of the quarter, but also have a regular feedback loop and mechanism with a trading coach. Then the third one, I think this is something that I used to poo-poo a little bit, but some form of breathing, meditation, or visualization and focus. Now you can visualize all day long about a winning trade, and then you place the trade and the trade could lose. So it's not about visualizing a winning trade, it's visualizing you following your specific trading process regardless of what the market is doing, where the market is moving at that time. So that can be through a form of meditation, that can be through deep breathing, that can be through using some sort of app. So there are two that I've used in the past. One of the ones I've used is HeartMath, and I still use that. And another one is the app called State. So the State app is very good, and they've got different breathing techniques on there to get your energy up. So sometimes I'll get up and I don't have the same energy that I had the previous day. So when I go in to analyze the markets or I might be a little bit distracted, I'll be thinking about something that isn't about the markets, isn't about the analysis, isn't about the possible trades I wanna place. So using HeartMath or using State App is really useful and I track where I am with that. I think if you're a day trader, it's especially important to get yourself in the right frame of mind. I think it's important that you don't rush to your screens in the morning, you know, you get out of bed late and go to your screens in a, in a mess. You should get some fresh air, do some breathing and get yourself in the right state of mind before you get in front of your screens. And then number four, another one. Now this is again, this is external to your actual mindset, but I keep coming back to this one, which is data. Are you recording the data on a regular, regular basis? Are you making sure you track whether the trades are winners or losers? The risk to reward on your trade? The number of trades in a row that have been winners? The number of trades that have been losers? Are you in a good performing period? Are you in a bad performing period? We had a period of time last year where we had, I think, 12 swing trades in a row that won. So people's mindsets at that time were good because they're sitting on a winning run. But then later on in the year, I think we had four losers, one winner, and then another three losers. So out of about eight trades, we'd had seven or so losing trades in that period. So they weren't all at once, but it wasn't a great period. So everyone's mindset wasn't necessarily as buoyant. 
And they're the times that you've got to make sure your mindset is in a good place. So it can be when it's the extremes of winning or the extremes of losing, when your focus and your mindset needs to be at its best. But having the data there to be able to know that, just being able to acknowledge that you are running a winning period, but it's not that different to what happened two years ago, or you've had three losing trades, and in that moment, it feels like you're all over the place, but when you check back across the data, what you can see is that that is a common theme with that strategy every two or three months. So just knowing that puts you in a better place from a mindset point of view. And then, lastly, I would say having an understanding of where your fear and greed barometer is. Are you more fear orientated? Are you more greed orientated? Now, I see a lot of, a lot of traders and trading coaches talk about this but they don't relate it specifically to personality style. So understanding personality style. If you're on our Kickstart course or one of our Kickstart trainings, what you go through in week four is an entire questionnaire that brings out the different personality styles that are your primary personality styles. So what the traders on that course can do is then understand how their fear and greed affects them. And we're constantly doing this at the next step, which is in my trading room, where we're seeing how different traders respond differently. For example, drivers will respond differently than analyticals depending on the results of the trades. So if a trader is sitting on a four trade losing run, very often the analytical traders will feel more fear and what they will do is they will retract and go and analyze where they think they've gone wrong on the trades. Whereas a driver will probably go into an overtrade, into a greed-based action and will actually try and out-trade the losing run they've been on. So having an understanding of your fear and greed and your personality style has a huge impact. So just to recap, number one, set your environment up as a professional trader. By doing that, you'll think and act more like a professional trader. Make sure you've got two feedback loops. So you've got your own feedback loop that you operate on a weekly basis and a feedback loop that's external. So a coach, a trader that understands what you're doing. Then make sure you have some sort of focus mechanism, so some form of meditation. I talked about state app and talked about heart math. Make sure you're keeping on top of your data and then understand how you operate within fear and greed. Because essentially what you're trying to do is, as a trader, you're gonna have times where you feel, um, you don't feel on top of your mindset. But the best traders will make a mistake or will feel fear and greed and they will get out of that situation and get back onto a level playing field more quickly. It's the traders that punish themselves for making a mistake or get into a bad place and stay in that and go further back. So it's not that you don't have issues, it's just you get through them and they have a smaller impact on your journey. And remember that trading is a decision-making process in an environment you can't control. So you are gonna make mistakes, you are gonna have good days, you are gonna have bad days, you're gonna have good weeks, bad weeks. But what's really important is to remember that you're training it like a muscle. So the better you get at these things that I've said, the more your mindset will improve and the more you'll be able to cope with the ups and downs and the inevitable changes that you're gonna experience as a trader. So remember that it's, an, it's, a, it's a process that you are getting better at, you train your mind. You're not gonna wake up on day one and have the perfect trading mindset. So I hope that helps, have a great weekend and I'll catch up with you soon.